This is the new Google Pixel 3, and today we're shooting a fun side-by-side -side camera comparison test versus the iPhone XS. Which one do you guys think is better? Place your bets below. I'm Ben from Authentech. Let's dive right in. Huge thanks to Google for sending me the Pixel 3, and huge thanks to Apple for letting me buy their iPhone for $1,250. Starting with video, 4K 30 FPS. Specs on each primary lens is actually quite similar. 12.2 megapixels on the Pixel, 12 megapixel on the iPhone. Both f1.8, 1.4 micron pixel size, and both feature optical image stabilization. First things first, the field of view is much wider on the iPhone over the Pixel when recording 4K video. And if you've been following me for a while, I always like to have a wider angle lens. Just fits more subject or landscape into camera frame. If we zoom in 200%, both cameras still look really nice and sharp. Great color balance and pleasant saturation and clarity. In the cave shadows, it looks like we can see a bit more detail in the dark areas on the Pixel, while the iPhone is losing a bit of those details. Here's a quick handheld stabilization test, and they both look semi-similar. Both cameras are doing a pretty nice job of smoothing out most of the shakes and wobbles in the footage, though I've got to give it to the Pixel for doing a slightly better job, I think. One big difference between these two phones, the Pixel 3 has a single rear-facing camera. The iPhone XS has dual lenses, one wide and one telephoto. A few times in my tests, like seen here, I zoom in on both cameras, intrigued to see how the digital zoom on the Pixel stacks up against the iPhone's telephoto lens, and I'm pretty impressed. It holds on fairly well in terms of quality and stabilization. Wider angle field of view on the iPhone. Much wider. It's fitting that whole parking garage. I did a quick autofocus test, and even though they seemed to tie just a couple times, more often than not, the iPhone was able to lock on to focus faster and more precise, even if it was just a few milliseconds. In this walking test, again, I think the Pixel has slightly smoother stabilization over the iPhone, though every once in a while it has this subtle stuttering frame issue you might notice here or there. I'm not sure if this is the EIS causing this, Let's talk about dynamic range. This was one of iPhone's big marketing terms this year, and I covered it pretty in depth in my other iPhone at camera videos. Make sure you check those out after this one in case you missed it. Long story short, the iPhone XS does a fantastic job of maintaining clarity and details in the super bright highlight and shadow areas in the scene. Well, the Pixel 3 puts up a very good fight. In some of these shots, it's the iPhone that actually looks to have more contrast and punch to the highs and lows. In this water fountain shot, it's interesting to compare and zoom in and then analyze the mist and water coming from the fountain. Just look at all the details of water droplets that we can clearly see in the Pixel 3, whereas in the iPhone is almost missing out on a lot of those finer details. Very interesting. And this is a walk-in stabilization test. Here I turn the rear-facing cameras around, and it's crazy how much sharper the Pixel looks over the iPhone. Also for colors, even though I was facing directly into the bright warm sun, I feel like the Pixel is doing a nice job of keeping my skin tones close to accuracy versus the iPhone turns my skin super red, soft, and less realistic looking. This is a jogging stabilization test, 4K 30. Interesting here, both cameras have a little wobble and jello effect going on in the jogging test. However, again, I think the Pixel's doing a slightly better job with smoother stabilization, maintaining a sharper image, while the iPhone seems a bit softer and it's seeking autofocus more often and inaccurately. And this is a quick audio test on the new Google Pixel 3. And this is audio on the Apple iPhone XS. How's the audio sound? Let's live authentic. Let's live authentic. In this audio test, very interesting results. I'd say the Pixel is much quieter than the iPhone. No editing applied to either. Jumping back to dynamic range, this shot is very cool to compare. Just look at the shadow areas like in the trees. The iPhone again is crushing some of those shadow details 
while we can see more clarity on the pixel. However, when we aim right at the sun, I'd say the iPhone is retaining more definition in those super bright cloud areas versus the pixel is blowing those areas out. One last major difference between the 4K video on these two cameras, the iPhone can record up to 4K 60 FPS, which is awesome. Unfortunately, the Pixel 3 cannot. It maxes out at 4K 30. I'm not sure why, I feel like the Pixel could have been capable of shooting 4K 60, but sadly not this time around. Hopefully next year. Now let's check out some photo samples I shot side by side. I went down to the park, it was a partly cloudy and sunny day with plenty of high contrast scenes. First things first, that wide angle field of view is much more similar when capturing photos, which is nice to see. Colors and saturation look pretty similar again on each with the iPhone possibly being just a tad more saturated with its colors. As for dynamic range, both are touting some awesome bleeding edge HDR features and tone mapping, and honestly, they both look really good. If I had to declare a winner though, in some tricky lighting situations, I felt the iPhone actually produced slightly brighter, more vibrant looking shots with more clarity in the darker shadow areas in the scene. As for sharpness and fine detail, it's always fun to zoom way in and do a little pixel peeping. I'd have to vote a toss up on this one because in some shots, the iPhone looks a bit sharper, but then in others, the pixel wins. Lastly, to compare iPhone's secondary telephoto lens to the new Pixel 3 Super Res Zoom feature, call me super impressed as the Pixel holds on pretty close behind. Incredible tech and algorithms to think that the Pixel can almost accomplish the same digital zoom as an optical telephoto lens on the iPhone. Very cool. Jumping to slow motion, the Pixel can shoot 120 FPS at 1080p or 240 FPS at 720. The iPhone wins in terms of specs since it can shoot 120 or 240 both at 1080p. Interesting though, in this shot both cameras were recording 240 FPS and the video quality is much more similar than I thought. Could the iPhone possibly be scaling a 720 res up to 1080p? I have no idea, it's just a thought. I had imagined the iPhone's higher resolution quality to be much better than the Pixel 720p, though it doesn't seem to be the case here. Another small problem I noticed on the iPhone, there's some jittering or stuttering in the video. Do you guys see that? In this other slow-mo shot, both cameras recording 1080p, 120 FPS. The contrast and clarity is cranked way up on the iPhone, making its image look much sharper. Both record audio in slow-mo, which is nice. Interesting here, the Pixel seems to be struggling to lock focus, and it also has some interlacing or scanning issue going on. Switching to the front-facing cams. And this is a front-facing camera test on the new Google Pixel 3 versus iPhone XS. Now, what do you guys think here? I think the quality and image actually looks fairly similar, at least starting out. The stabilization, again, looks slightly smoother on the Pixel over the iPhone, maybe? But then here, the Pixel looks slightly more shaky. However, the iPhone simply looks blurry. Kind of funny turnout. Now the Pixel 3 has a new trick up its sleeve. It can zoom It can zoom out on its ultra wide front facing camera. When we zoom out, I gotta love Google for putting that wide angle here. I think it makes sense for a group selfie and those kind of shots. Weird though, it seems the autofocus stopped working and then look up at the dynamic range on the iPhone. Up there in the skies and the crosswalk, it's looking nicer back there. I snapped a few front facing selfie shots with and without portrait mode. I think the iPhone looks a little softer, almost a glowing look, but its edge outlining looks well done. The Pixel is doing a fine job as well, but then again, more slightly darker and contrast applied. Can't forget a few low light shots. Again, I'm noticing the iPhone image is a lot warmer in tone, while the Pixel seems to obtain a more accurate white balance. Its whites just look nice and clean, vibrantly white. The iPhone often leans a bit too warm in my opinion. 
As for noise to quality and sharpness ratio, I'd say they both look really good. Again, the Pixel producing some slightly sharper images, possibly a smidge more lifelike looking. Here's a selfie shot showing off the wide angle on the Pixel, and I really love that wide. Also, the iPhone looks a bit grainier than the Pixel. When we switch to video, something interesting happens though. The Pixel turns a little soft, almost as an angelic glow. Look, do you guys know what's going on here? Is it just missing the focus? The iPhone looks sharper and more crisp, which is nice though, sadly of course not perfect, as it's stuttering pretty poorly on the slow pan. When we finally lock focus onto the chair, the Pixel cleans up a bit and looks sharper and nicer. Looking at the waveform, the Pixel has higher whites, while the iPhone has darker darks. Funny how they're kind of the opposite. So here's my closing thoughts. First and foremost, we have to compare pricing. Pixel 3 starts at $800. The iPhone XS starts at $1,000 or $200 more. Second, specs used to be the big thing to compare, but now with most top tier phones, specs are becoming much less important, especially as they become more similar, and it comes down to how the device and camera performs in real life tests. Lastly, the results in a lot of these shots were much more similar than I thought they'd be, but I'll consider that a good thing. I would hope that if we're paying a lot of money for a top tier flagship phone, that it performs well in almost all scenarios, which I think both of these cameras prove that. Sometimes I liked the more vibrant colors and wider angle lens on the iPhone. It has fantastic dynamic range and 4K 60. However, I really like the stabilization and overall quality and sharpness on the Pixel 3. It produced clean, white balance, pleasant looking shots. Let me know which camera you like down in the comments and make sure you stay tuned for more iPhone, Pixel, and other camera tests coming soon. Until next time, let's live authentic.